my name is Amy. I am a cosmetic dermatology physician assistant living and practicing in sunny Miami, Florida. In addition to practicing cosmetic dermatology, I also run a skincare and beauty blog, Instagram, and TikTok account where I love to educate on skincare ingredients, efficacious products, and other fun things. If you don't know what a PA is, we are licensed medical providers here in the United States that work in a variety of medical subspecialties, and I just so happen to work in cosmetic dermatology at the renowned Bauman Cosmetic and Research Institute in Miami. So my skin is dry. Even in the humid weather here in Miami, I have relatively dry skin. I'm also sensitive and I have rosacea. So it's rare that I actually have a rosacea breakout with pack mills, but you can see today I actually do. So just in time for this video. So let's get started. First step in the morning, I'm going to start with my cleanser, of course. Today, I'm going to be using the Glycolics 10% Moisturizing Cleanser. I love to get my exfoliating acids in the form of a cleanser, especially if you're new to acids or if you have sensitive skin because it's a wash out formulation so it's not sitting on your skin throughout the day. When you're using a cleanser that has acids or some sort of medication, whether it be glycolic acid, salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, you really want to work it into the skin and cleanse for a good 30 to 60 seconds. So you give the ingredient time to work its way into the skin and do its job. I'm gonna go wash this off and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and I rinsed off my cleanser. Now I'm just patting my face dry. Of course, I got water all over myself in the process. So patting dry, the skin's still a bit damp. I do wanna to talk to you guys about a couple other cleanser options that I think are fantastic. So as I mentioned, I love using the cleanser uh, as a way to get in chemical exfoliants. Glycolic acid is one of my favorite for dry skin. I also love to do a glycyl combo for people with oily skin and those who are acne prone. So this is a really good one by Replenix. It's 5% glycolic acid and 2% sal. So this is a great option if you have oily skin. If you are using exfoliants elsewhere in your regimen, I usually like to keep my cleanser super simple. In general, the advice I give is if you have oily skin, look for gel or foaming cleansers. If you have dry skin, look for creamy or milky cleansers. So these are a couple of my favorite gentle cleansers. They're both by La Roche-Posay. This one I would choose more for dry skin and this one more for oily skin. So this routine is a little bit extra. I don't do this extensive of a routine every single day, but this is mixed makeup, so we have to bring it. And today I'm going to, as my second step, use a little bit of a lip scrub. So I am pretty good with using lip moisturizers uh, throughout the day. However, I still find that my lips can get dry and flaky. So I love to use a lip scrub a couple times a week just to remove that. This is the one by Fresh. It's their sugar lip scrub. I've had it for our, I'm a big fan. I like to do this too, like before I'm gonna be putting on makeup, if I'm gonna be wearing lipstick, especially a matte lipstick. But to be honest, you can use a washcloth. You don't have to be fancy about it. Never underestimate the power of a washcloth. It is a good exfoliator. So I mean that to say you can use it to exfoliate your lips, get it wet and just scrub your lips a little bit. But also when you're drying your face, just be gentle because you could really over exfoliate even just with a washcloth. Next, I'm gonna be following with the Ilia Lip Wrap. I like to use some sort of a lip moisturizer before I do the rest of my routine, just to protect the delicate lip area from the more active products. Next, I'm going to be going in with the Dr. Dennis Gross Frulic and Retinol Eye Serum. I love this eye serum for daytime, and it has, as the name says, retinol and ferulic acid in it. It also has licorice root, so it's great for anybody who has dark circles that are due to actual hyperpigmentation. Also, because of the retinol, it will boost collagen production as well. So I love to use an eye serum during the day. There's a myth that you can't use retinol during the day, but that is in fact a myth, you can. Some retinols are easily deactivated by light, which is why we tell you to use them at night, but most of the newer generation retinoids and the stabilized formulations are fine to be used during the day. They will not make you more photosensitive that is a myth. So I did my Dr. Dennis Gross eye serum and now I'm actually going to follow because I have dry skin with it actual eye cream. So this is the one by Skin Fix. I love this. It's a really basic but very moisturizing eye cream. 
It has hyaluronic acid as well as emollients and occlusives. So you will notice in my regimen that I don't have a dedicated hyaluronic acid serum. And the reason is because most products that we use, especially moisturizers, already have humectants like hyaluronic acid and glycerin in them. And they're most effective when they're combined in formulations with emollients and occlusives. So I generally don't use a dedicated AHA product. I get my AHA or my glycerin in all the other products that I'm using. And today I'm going to be using oxymetazolone. It is a topical alpha blocker. And I'm using this because I have rosacea, as I mentioned, it's rare that I get papules. I happen to have some today. What I usually experience is flushing rosacea. So if I flush with coffee when I'm warm, with red wine, if I'm stressed or nervous, so I actually have a meeting today and I don't want to flush for it. So I'm going to apply this product and it will help reduce any flushing. It is uh, available by a prescription only. I'm just going to wait a few minutes just to kind of let that sit on my skin before I move on. You can see I also flush on my chest. This is normal for me. Uh, it's kind of warm in my bathroom, so I'm flushing. Sometimes I'll actually apply that medication to my neck and my chest as well if needed. If I'm ever waiting for a product to dry down, usually I work thinnest to thickest in general, depending on the ingredients that I'm using. And if I do that, I don't wait for things to dry. However, if I'm using a medication like this, I just let it dry for a couple minutes and I'll just like brush my teeth or do whatever else I need to and then come back. Okay, next I'm going to be going in with my vitamin C. I am often using the Revision C Plus Correcting. This one is, is THD ascorbate. So this is a lipid soluble form of vitamin C, which means it doesn't need a low pH formulation to properly penetrate the skin. So it can be better suited for those like me who have sensitive skin. And you always want to use your vitamin C in the morning time because it works synergistically with your sunscreen. So you want that antioxidant protection during the day rather than at night. If you want to use one at night, that's fine, but really it's important to be used during the day. A couple other vitamin C serums that I love is number one, this one from Dr. Brand. This is their new C-scription. It's also THD ascorbate. This is a 20% THD ascorbate. And then of course, the OG, the SkinCeutical C Ferulic, the patented formulation. You can't go wrong with this. It's L-ascorbic acid, uh, which I do reserve for my patients or you know, followers who are not very sensitive. If you find that you break out or have sensitivity with an L-ascorbic acid serum, try THD ascorbate and see if that suits you better. I mentioned that I use my vitamin C in the morning, but actually one of my nighttime serums also has vitamin C in it. So at night, I love to use this one as my serum step. This is 10% azelaic acid by Notorium. I have, as you can see, redness. I have hyperpigmentation. I'm acne prone, rosacea prone. I have it all. So I love to use an azelaic acid to target all of those things that once. It's also a very, very gentle chemical exfoliant. Next, I'm going to be going in with my moisturizer. I use the Xerophyte line of moisturizers. This is their Xerophyte Barrier Repair. And the reason I swear by this moisturizer is because they use multi-lamellar emulsion technology. So this technology reinforces our skin barrier by mimicking the lamellar structure of our own stratum corneum. So this works to, like I said, mimic our own skin barrier to moisturize our skin, prevent transepidermal water loss. It's really important when you deal with problems like acne and and rosacea and sensitive skin that you're focusing on repairing that skin barrier as the first step. So it's really important that you're using the right moisturizer to do that for yourself. So I'm turning 30 next week and I have finally incorporated dedicated neck product to nip that problem in the bud real quick. This is the one from Revision. This is their neck to firm advanced. They use smart antioxidant technology, a blend of peptides. They have a microbiome technology too. Usually I'm not the first to jump on the bandwagon with these kind of products. You know, I'm like a vitamin C SPF retinol kind of girl because we know that that's what works. But the before and afters and the clinicals for this one were impressive. So I incorporated it into my regimen. So no morning regimen is complete without an SPF. I personally 
prefer a tinted SPF because I have melasma and hyperpigmentation. Just, you know, add it to the list of things that I have. But iron oxides in tinted formulations help protect us from visible light. Now, you'll hear a lot about HEV or blue light. That's high energy visible light that it comes off the sun in much higher doses than our electronic devices. So there's a lot of marketing for products that protect us from our devices. There's really not any research showing that the HEV light that comes off of our electronic devices is in a high enough dose to cause changes to our skin. However, we are for sure getting it from the sun, so you might as well stay protected anyways. I always recommend a sunscreen, even if you're not leaving the house, because UVA and high energy visible light comes right in through those windows and you want to be protected. So again, a tinted sunscreen, if you have melasma or hyperpigmentation, is the best protection. And you also want to make sure that it's broad spectrum. So you want one fourth to half of a teaspoon of sunscreen on your brush. This one is the Ulta MD UV Restore. It's extremely moisturizing. So if you have dry or very dry skin, you are probably gonna love this one. If you have normal to oily skin, you probably won't. It has squalling in it and it's just incredibly moisturizing. I love it. It gives me a nice dewy finish, but even I sometimes need to add powder on top of it because it's very dewy. So I use about one fourth of a teaspoon per day because I'm gonna go in and do my neck and chest and ears with a different sunscreen. Sometimes I'll let it, especially a formulation like this that's super gooey, I'll let it dry down for a minute and then do a little bit more rather than putting the full amount on at once. Sometimes it can feel like a lot. Don't forget your eyelids and under your eyes. That's one thing if you do struggle with dark circles. Dark circles are extremely tricky to treat and there's a couple different things that could be causing them. If you have true hyperpigmentation, you definitely wanna make sure that you're wearing, a, you should be anyways, but making sure that you're getting your sunscreen all the way up there. Oftentimes I find people are afraid to get their sunscreen around their eyes, but it's really important that we protect that area as well from UVA and UVB. Next, I'm gonna go in with the UV Sheer to apply to my neck and my chest. This one here, SPF 50. So I like to use a non-tinted for my neck and my chest because I don't want tinted sunscreen to come off on my clothes. This is also a great formulation if you have oily skin. I also keep this one in my beach bag because I like to apply something that's not very moisturizing as a reapplication at the beach just because I feel like it's already humid and I don't like the feeling of moisturizing products, or I should say products that are too dewy on my skin. You can see that flushing on my chest. That'll go away in a little bit with the medication I put on. So a couple of other sunscreens that I love for daily use. The Color Science Glow is another favorite. It has a nice shimmer to it. So again, that dewy glow, you're gonna really like it if you have dry skin or if you like a dewy glow. That's also a tinted one. So then a couple for oily skin. I love the Elta MD UV Clear for those who have oily skin, who are prone to clogged pores or acne. And then the La Roche-Posay Anthelios. This is a liquid sunscreen. I love this one for oily skin. I'll even use it to reapply again when I'm at the beach and I don't want something that's dewy. I want something that's just going to dry down nice and matte. I'll use this one. It's fantastic. So you want to make sure that you're not skipping your lips. So I'm going to go in with the Color Science Lip Shine. This one is in shade Coral. It has SPF 35 and iron oxides in it. The lips are often forgotten when it comes to SPF protection. And even for daily use, you wanna make sure that you're protecting those lips. You don't want skin cancer on your lip. Nobody wants that, it's not fun. And then again, for the beach, I keep one that's non-tinted. This is the Elta MD UV Lip Balm. So I'll keep this in my beach bag. So that is my morning regimen. I'm hydrated, I'm moisturized, I'm protected, I'm dewy, I'm bouncy, I love it. Most of the skincare products I use every single day, but the lip scrub and things like that are kind of for extra days. But I would also be remiss if I didn't mention some of the things I'm doing in office to keep my skin looking good. So I do regular peels. I recently did the PCA peel. We layered the hydroquinone and the retinol. I do this with my esthetician, Allie, she's amazing. I also do a neuromodulator treatment every three to four 
four months, usually just for it or Botox. I've had a handful of syringes of filler over the last five years or so. I also love microneedling. That's a fantastic treatment for collagen induction. Also, I'm prone to PIH, so I don't get a pimple. So these are little papules from, from my rosacea, which I get rarely. Occasionally, I'll get like a hormonal pimple, an actual acne lesion. And it's not often, but the problem is that it always leaves a little PIH of Mediterranean descent. So I'm super prone to PIH. Another reason that iron oxides and sunscreen is so, so, so important. When you have acne, you have to protect it from the sun so that you avoid PIE and PIH. So anyways, I use microneedling and peels and things like that to help lighten those. But to be honest, I don't break out too often. So it, it really doesn't bother me. I feel like I've come a long way in my skincare. I had cystic acne when I was about 25. It was terrible. I never had acne growing up. And then all of a sudden it just erupted and I got it under control on the right medical skincare routine and found that that was super helpful. Now, if I break out here and there, I don't really worry about it at all. I do use, as you can see, kind of a mixture between medical grade and products that you can get at big box beauty stores or at drug stores. Although medical grade isn't a regulated term, as clinicians, we like to use medical grade skincare because we know the brands, they have a lot of resources and money that they can put behind research and development and clinical studies and things like that. So we know that the product and the formulation is efficacious and stable. So that's why a lot of us recommend these products that can only be bought at dermatology offices or by authorized online retailers. But as you can see, you can also find some really efficacious skincare from big box beauty stores and from drug stores. I think cosmetic skincare has come a long way and there are a lot of incredible brands out there. It's really all about finding what works best for your skin and your skin type. Thank you so much for following along my morning skincare routine for dry, sensitive skin. You can find me on TikTok, on Instagram, at the underscore skin enthusiast where I share loads of skincare tips and tricks as well as beauty and I would love to chat so send me a DM. Bye!